Hello and welcome to Meeps Math Matters. Today I'm going to talk about the irrationality of the square root of 2. Now you may be thinking, what's wrong with the square root of 2? Seems a very reasonable number to me. Well yes, of course. What I mean by irrational is that it's not rational. And what do I mean by rational? Rational, definition of rational number, is a number that can be represented as a fraction, you could say, a ratio, p divided by q, p over q, where p and q are integers, okay? Positive or negative or zero whole numbers, okay? q has to be non-zero. That's something important. I will get to that another time about dividing by zero. Okay, so that's what we mean by rational number is that you can represent it as a fraction. Of course, any whole number can be represented as a fraction. 10 divided by 1, 10 over 1 is 10. Um, so that's a rational number, and so an irrational number well, it's not rational. That's all. It cannot be represented by such a fraction. So what I'm going to do is prove that the square root of 2 cannot be represented by a fraction. Before I get into the proof, I want to give a little motivation, historical motivation. So it goes back to our friends, the Pythagoreans. Now, the Pythagoreans, these mathematical mystics, dealt with math in a geometric form. We already saw them with the Pythagorean theorem though, of course, it's not unique to them. If we look at this triangle in the middle here, we have two legs, side one each, and this hypotenuse C. Well, C squared equals 2, so in our modern notation, C equals the square root of 2. Okay, so the Greeks had to deal with this, and why is this a problem? Well, their concept of number was what you could construct geometrically that they could say stuff about, so you might have a unit length, and you could do these compass and straight edge constructions and add more of these. So here is their concept of 3. Now you could also construct fractions, these rational, positive rational numbers, with similar triangles. So rational numbers you could get from similar triangles. Okay, I'm not going to show that. So when they come across square root of 2, now they understood rational numbers, but they could not get square root of 2 equaling any kind of fraction. So this flummoxed them. So they have whole numbers, positive whole numbers. They have these positive rational numbers. And then there's this anomaly, square root of 2. Okay, and this is pretty simple. And so when Pythagoras, the story goes, discovered that Square root of 2 was part of this new set of numbers, the irrational numbers. He was just so overjoyed, so overjoyed that the knowledge of this esoteric, never-before-known truth was made known to him by the gods. He went out and sacrificed 100 bulls. That sounds pretty expensive, but the point of the story, though probably not true, is to emphasize what a major breakthrough this was in terms of math. Um, and this comes again and again in math history where we, we extend the idea of what a number is. Zero was a huge extension, just thinking of zero negative numbers. Um, then there are other things like transcendental numbers. We have infinitesimal concepts from calculus. We get into imaginary complex numbers later. Anyway, this is a tangent. I'll get to some of these in the future. Let's get to this proof. The proof uh, is fairly straightforward. It is a proof by contradiction. Okay, so I want to prove square root of 2 is irrational. Let us assume the opposite, and we're going to come up with a contradiction. So what is the opposite? The opposite is that it's rational, which means, okay, I can write square root of 2 equals p over q, okay, for some integer p and q. But I can say something even stronger than that, 
and that is I'm going to say let this be in lowest terms meaning okay let me give you an example if I gave you the fraction 6 over 8 well 6 and 8 have common factor of 2 okay and I'm not going to expect that you know fraction arithmetic but if you have the same factor on the top and the bottom because a fraction is really just division the lowest terms for 6 eighths is 3 fourths any fraction you can do this you can get it down to where the numerator that's the top number or P has no factors in common with the bottom number or Q good okay so we have this in lowest terms um, let us square both sides Okay, so 2 equals p squared over q squared. This is important. We're going to use this a couple ways. So first, multiply both sides by q squared. I get 2q squared equals p squared. Now remember, q and p are integers. This means p squared is an integer, q squared is an integer, so 2 times q squared, this is an even number. Now I'm going to use a fact that I'm not going to prove. You can prove it on your own. Um, it's relatively simple to prove, so do it yourself. Um, an even number squared is even, and an, the square of an odd number is odd. Okay. Um, this can be called a parity argument. It has to do with whether things are even or odd. So you might want to try this little proof on your own, a uh, little algebraic proof, perhaps. There's a couple ways you can prove that, so uh, try that out on your own. Which means that p squared is an even number. That means p must be even. Okay, so this equation tells me p must be even. Very good. So let's just say p equals 2 times k. Okay, for some k is an integer. k is a whole number. So let's go back to this equation. 2 equals p squared over q squared. So now I'm going to have, um, actually let's go to the 2q squared equals p squared. So I have 2q squared equals, now p remember equals 2k and that's squared, so that's 4k squared, okay, let's divide both sides by 2, so I get q squared equals 2k squared, okay, again, we've got whole numbers q and k, uh, 2k squared is even, that means q must be even, Um, problem. Let's look up above. Our assumption was that this P over Q was in lowest terms. I have just shown that both P and Q must be even. Okay? That means they share a common factor of 2 that we could reduce. This isn't lowest terms. There is no lowest terms because there is no such fraction. There is these two arrows pointing at each other, head to head, it's a contradiction. Therefore, our original assumption that it is rational cannot be true, and a lot of times when you are proving irrationality, you assume rationality and then show it's not, there's a contradiction. There's other more direct ways you can do this. In any case, this is a proof by contradiction, QED, square root of 2 is irrational, go slaughter that bull as an offering to the gods. And as always, you can contact me at marypat.campbell at gmail.com. And remember to spread the math love.